So whoever, as as you've kind of stepped into your role as this uh, bushy tail stockbroker um, <laughs> or unexpected stockbroker, who are like the the most profound influences? Uh, obviously Buffett, and maybe we'll talk about, but any other influences and why? And then I'd love to then uh, tail back into why specifically Buffett and what he represents to you versus others. Yeah, I think, um, no, it was, I was all in on Buffett and maybe we'll start there and, and then I can pivot to other people that I studied, but I, I, I didn't pass the net wide. It's actually, you know, it's the Thursday of the third, you know, we're in the third week, it's Thursday afternoon and Friday is the last day and I had it in my mind that I was going to have to resign and thank them uh, for that opportunity, but I was just totally lost. It, it was a value investing shop and you probably, I don't know if you remember, Mo, but, you know, some of us old guys like me, we, we had what we call value line investment surveys, the old value line. And it was nothing but rows and rows and rows of numbers and columns of things like that. And and all they did was talk to me about accounting and balance sheets and income statements and all these ratios and stuff like that. And and I, I was just totally lost. I, I just could, I couldn't piece it together. Um, but that Thursday uh, afternoon, um, the, the trainer gave us, uh, her name was Laura Lang, a wonderful woman, and she gave us a copy, a photocopy of the 1983 Berkshire Hathaway Annual Report. And we were uh, told to read that annual report that night in our hotel rooms and come back the next day and be prepared to discuss and so, you know, grab, grabbed an early dinner and went to the hotel room, opened it up and was instantly depressed because it was 24 type pages of Warren. There were no pictures, no photographs, no tables, no bar. You know, it was just, you know, like reading a long term paper. Hmm. And as I dove into it, it, it was, you know, really quite seriously, it was a proverbial light bulb went on because he didn't talk to me in the first 10 pages about anything having to do with accounting nothing he talked to me about the businesses that he owned he had just bought nebraska furniture mark uh that was that was started by a famous woman named rose blumpkin that he had bought you know he told me about you know how that business works he talked to me about the buffalo evening news newspaper business uh that was going on there stan lipsy was a publisher he taught me about seeds candies phenomenal business and, and and insurance companies and on and on and on and and so what happened was i went oh all those value line investment surveys are they're actually companies here and they have products and they have services and um they have management and i woke up the next morning and i went i get it this is what it is i understand it completely and um i hit the ground running and when i went into production mode um, i was like a kid following a ball player you know they they say pick your heroes right make sure you pick the right heroes and then when you when you find your hero just figure out everything you can about just imitate mm -hmm. them Right. And so my my career in the first four or five years was doing nothing but I had all the Berkshire Hathaway in reports in those days, you know, before Internet and all that, you would send twenty five dollars down to the SEC and they would photocopy. So I had all the annual reports of Berkshire. I had all the annual reports of the companies that he bought. Uh, there were articles in Forbes or Fortune. I had them newspapers. I had them. You know, I was all over this. Hmm. And, and so I was fully, fully, you know, in uh, on Warren Buffett. And um, I remember, you know, as a segue, uh, you know, my manager, because in those days we didn't, brokers didn't have a fee-based business. It was all commission. And my manager said to me, you know, if you ever sell anything, Robert, you could actually double your business. You could double your paycheck. Yeah. And I said, well, no, that's not how it works. I mean, you know, we're, we're, we're growing value quite well. And so, you know, that transitioned me eventually to the buy side. But along with Buffett, you know, to your first question, I, did, I didn't move on to like hedge fund managers and, you know, all the, the, the hot money guys that were killing it, you know, and stuff like that. So I, I, I studied guys like Bill Ruane and Rick Knuff, uh, who started the very famous Sequoia Fund, which was actually the seed capital from the Buffett Partnership. Hmm. Uh, I, I studied Charlie Munger, who was the vice chairman. He ran a hedge fund back then. Lou Simpson, phenomenal investor. He came out of Western Asset Management as the CIO and ended up managing the uh, uh, the portfolio of Geico for so many right. years. So I went through his portfolios and his writings. And then one that I you know, was really quite surprised was John Maynard Keynes, the, the very famous British economist yeah. historian. He actually was a phenomenal uh, portfolio manager. He managed the chess fund uh, at Cambridge uh, for about 14, 15 years and, and actually killed it. I mean, and he was the very first focused, concentrated low turnover portfolio manager. So right. I stayed. I stayed within my, you know, within my fraternity, if you will. 
I read Peter Lynch and, you know, Peter, you know, great investor. You know, he wrote the um, forward to the first edition of the Warren Buffett way, you know, yeah. phenomenal guy, uh, you know, understood, you know, you know, understand the product, understand the business stuff that did, you know, we, we studied John Templeton with not so much a business investor, but a great contrarian. Uh, so those guys, you know, we were aware of, but, you know, did a lot of history work. Uh, you know, Peter Bernstein's books were a big influence against the gods on uh, probabilities and statistics. So really kind of stayed in my wheelhouse, Mo, and right. didn't venture too far outside. 